clear you. The fish is fighting. No wonder he's fighting. Y'all won't believe what I got. Uh, I got him in the tail too. Boy, that's the way to start it off, is it not? Ooh, I want my spoon back. Let's see if we can land this fish. Y'all hold on. Mm. I got him. I got my spoon back. That's what's important. <laughs> well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. Beautiful morning out here on the Tennessee River. Now, the water's high because we've had a lot of rain, a tremendous amount of rain. But today, I'm going to do a little spoon plugging. But first, I'm going to have to get this gar off of here. Now, this fish swiped at this spoon and I've got some real sticky hooks on here so he got caught he messed up but let's get her spoon back we'll take a look at this gar <clears throat> which is a long nose gar and then we'll talk about what we're wanting to do today blessing to be out here look at there what a gar that fish did. He swiped at that spoon, just like I was talking about the other day when we came out here. Anything that hit a spoon, that fish swiped at it, missed it, and it ended up catching him in the tail. But let's let him go. I was lucky to have hold, held on to him that long. Them were some strong fish. But today, well, we're going to do some spoon plugging and I caught that fish on a little Cleo a quarter ounce little Cleo uh, made by Acme bait tackle Acme tackle and uh, that's a quarter ounce right there the only thing is is I've added this Gamagatsu size 6 treble hook to the back of it I took that cheap hook off and put a sticky hook on it now that material that's on the back of it will actually cause this bait to look more realistic it'll make this bait look a little bit bigger it'll make this bait fall slower because the water temperature right now on top is 48 degrees cold for here in the south and it'll allow you to catch more fish because of everything that i mentioned right there now i have a short leader <clears throat> tied on here about two feet long or maybe a little longer than that, a 14 pound test red cage in mono. Uh, 10 pound test braid is what I have spooled up on this 2000 sized Iowa reel. But that's a double uni knot and that's a Palomar knot on that spoon. And we're up in some good trees, gotta love it. Uh, I'm using a medium action six and a half foot no that's a six foot eight shimano rod right now and uh well we need to get up out of these dead gone trees so we can catch a fish from dead gone it how'd i get up in here like that whoa it's an easy bait to fish i mean um it, all you do is just make a cast. Let it hit the bottom. Okay. Pull it up off the bottom a couple feet and then let it fall back. And just keep repeating that all the way to the boat. And you don't have to cast them. You can, you can vertical jig the little Cleo or the cast master. Uh, without any problem. It's just as an effective, you can get over the top of the fish and just vertical jig them and catch them that way if they're in deep enough water where you won't spoke them. Very versatile bait. 
when I'm using braid, when I'm spoon plugging, and by, by the way, that's what we're going to call this technique, I set my drag loose because braid are pretty loose. Braid has no stretch, folks. And because of that, you know, I wouldn't have never landed that guard. I did not mean in that I really wanted to, but I would have never landed that gar by hooking him in a tail if I didn't have this drag set correct loose. The reason for that is, like I said, there's no stretch in braid, but uh, with that drag set light, you can land some big fish with these small trebles. That's a size six. Sometimes I'll use a size four. Uh, treble on the back of that particular bait but now as far as a rod a medium action rod is the best in fact I have another spoon it's a cast master quarter ounce rigged on another rod seven foot rod medium action rod it's uh, the same setup that I have right here but little Cleo's and cast master spoons are very effective for what we're going to be doing today now my target species my target species is white bass but now these baits like i mentioned before will catch anything and uh you never know what to hit them but these white bass are really running right now they're pre-spawn white bass uh this time of the year They'll gang up in big numbers. Oftentimes you can catch one after another. You will be absolutely give out. Give out, I'm talking about. The, the where you can't hardly fish no more because you'll be catching so many fish. We're gonna hunt them. We're gonna figure out how deep they are. And I'll show you how I work a spoon in water temperatures like this. It's a, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And there's a lot of big gar out here. Let's make a cast up here. Now I made a cast in about four feet of water, but I'm out here in 20 feet. So I need to figure out where these fish are at. So what I'm doing is I'm going to pull that Look here. Now I didn't expect that. Not that quick. I sure did. That's a good fish right here, or it's a pretty good fish, and I believe it's a white bass. Wow. Y'all see how that fish is fighting? It is fighting. That tree right there. A good fish. I mean, a Jim Dandy. What have we got right? Oh my goodness! That fish fought just like a white bass. We're going. This is going to be a multi-fish species day, right here, folks. No wonder the doggone thing fought. There's a lot of different species down this bank right here. I can't that. It's a buffalo. A doggone round mouth. Buffalo, let me show you to him. Let me show y'all to him. How to say that? Let me show y'all this fish. Let's do it like that. I want y'all to look little buffalo now if you've never seen one before look at this little old round mouth it's kind of like a mullet in salt water it's got that little round mouth do you see any similarities do you smell what I'm stepping in <clears throat> but he's pretty let's let him go one back Spoon plug in it, it's not hard folks. All I'm doing is lifting the bait up a couple feet and then follow the bait back down a little quicker than it's than it's falling. That way to have that erratic action on the fall. Uh, that's very, very important. There's a fish. What have we 
got now. That fish was in the exact same place that I caught that other one at. Except for this one is our target species. Mm. Big old white bass. Big old white bass. My goodness. I got a lot of questions about the about that when I when we did that, come out here the last time and, and done a little spoon plugging. I got a got a lot of good interesting questions about these fish right here. Uh, let's let him go. Whether or not they're good eating, I'm gonna tell you what folks, they're delicious eating fish. In fact, if you've ever eaten smoked mullet, you can smoke those white bass and they'll taste exactly or pretty close to smoked mullet. Very delicious eating fish. And you can fry them. They're great fried too. That white bass is probably in six feet of water. So let's make it up there. Up there. Okay. I'm going to let the spoon plug hit the bottom. Pick it up and follow it back down. Let it fall back down. Pick it up. Let it fall back down. It'll flutter down erratically. Golly. What in the world have we got now, folks? I don't have any idea. Golly. I do know he put some, he stripped some drag, did he not? Whatever it is, it's big. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I want y'all to look at this. That's the biggest gar I have ever. Oh, my. That's a big gar. No wonder, and I hooked it in the pectoral fin. Y'all look right here. them went down the river a piece folks quite a piece and uh trying to wear him down this current is helping him a lot and another thing is the way he's hooked is helping him a lot he thought he was going to grab him a shad that's what he thought let's get away from this grass if i can i mean this ain't no poot sniffer little old poot sniffer this is a good one right here. Okay. There's my leader. Okay, let's get him right here. Y'all see what I'm talking about, right? That thing is huge. Now look at there. Whoo! See how I had him hooked, folks, right there? That made him double hard, but this is a huge fish. I want y'all to take a look at this. I'm going to get him and hold him up the best I can, but I want you to look what some dentures he's got. See them dentures? Oh, my. He's looking at me with that doggone eye. Whoa. I got this stuff in here. This old eel grass. I love eel grass. One swipe with that bill across my hands or knuckles. Oh, it opened me up. Let's see if we can get this thing loose. Okay, we got him loose. It come out easy. Real easy. 
All right, let's take a look at this dude. Look at that. That is a big son of a gun, folks. I don't know if you can tell, but <laughs> that is a huge, huge fish. Let's let him go. That was a lot of fun. It makes me want to come out here and gar fish because you talking about a powerful fish, this fish is no doubt powerful. Hard to hold on to. Okay. Let's watch him. God, what a giant. There he goes. That old nasty. Let me smell that. That stinks. That stinks like yarn. <clears throat> Y'all know what yarn is. It's just a southern word for anything that's nasty and stinks and it's rank. Rank is the right word for that. Oh man, Ricky! Well, you can go up down there if you want to and fish with him. But now, he's windier than a sack full of farts. All right, folks, we got 19 feet of water right here, and I actually seen some shad. We went over some shad. So let's try a couple casts in here anyway. Are you kidding me? What in the world have we got? Oh my goodness, look here folks. I got another gar. And a big one. Now this one didn't miss it. He grabbed a hold of it. He eat this spoon. I'm gonna have to get out of here if I'm gonna catch anything else. Golly, but it's hard to leave. Or I believe this one eat it. Because as soon as he hit it, I set the hook. What it is, there's a lot of shad. Yeah, it's right there in the end of his nose. See that? Another big old gar. They. Hey, man. Woo. I'm catching garfish. I love to catch the doggone garfish. Woo. Hey, man. Woo. Doggone thing is fat, and then I can't do I can't do nothing about it But just wear him down And that hook is right in the end of his snout Are y'all are y'all smelling what I'm stepping in shoe we the hook is right in the end of his snout <laughs> And here he comes look at there a look at there. Whew. To be honest with y'all, them things right here fights a lot harder than them white bass do. My, my, my. Where's that old stinking glove at? I'm going to grab a hold to this and then put him in the doggone boat. That's what I'm going to do. I want that little Cleo. I don't want him to get my worm, my bug. Oh, golly. Whew. Doggone. I don't know what to do. My, my, my. And there went a bit. I need to settle down, folks, because I got that adrilogen. The adrilogen that I possess is very, very, let me use a big word and say it in a big way, very, very uh, strong, okay? Very strong. Look here. That is a monster. I'm going to grab this old snout and hope that hook don't get me. If it does, well... It won't be the first one. This ain't real. Let's see. Golly! I had to let him go because if I didn't, 
my my hand would have slid up his snout and I'd got hooked. So I had to do that. We'll try it again here. <sighs> Golly, what a stout son of a gun. God. Y'all seeing that? Woo! My, my, my. Okay. Hook just come out. I might have to retie that spoon. Oh, he destroyed one of them hooks. Look here. Let me move that string. I'm sorry, folks. But he destroyed that one. See how it's being in like that? Golly. And things will hit a spoon this time of year. There ain't no doubt about it. They think it's shad, either a thread fan or gizzard shad. They're used to feeding on them here in this river. And, you know, they'll flat knock the fire out of them. But this is a big female. Now, the reason why I know it's a female, she's fat, okay? This time of the year, these fish are in pre-spawn. This is the pre-spawn period for uh, long-nosed gar here in the Tennessee River just like it is for, for white bass. So I'm gonna try to hold this one up, it's a big fish. Look at that. That thing is as big as me almost. That's a big son of a gun. Let's let her go. Look at that, those big old teeth right there. All right, let's get him, put him back. That thing's heavy, folks. I kid you not, she's heavy. Look here. She's ready to go. Look at there. Yeah, what a powerful fish. Yeah, well, folks, spoon plugging, well, it's a very effective way to fish, a very fun way to fish and you never know what you're going to catch. And that's the fact of the matter. When it comes to spoons, there's no telling what you'll catch. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Thank y'all for everything y'all have done. Hey. Doggone, I am talking. Out. Woo. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.